If you're a home studio enthusiast or hobbyist like me, or perhaps you're an aspiring mix engineer working out of your bedroom, there's two hurdles that we all need to get over to achieve better mixes. Number one, experience. Practice, practice, practice. There's no substitute for real good experience. But number two are the environments that we're mixing in. If you're working out of your bedroom or your basement or perhaps even your kitchen, you can put up acoustic panels and you can improve the situation. But these rooms are just not optimized for mixing. And there may be certain frequencies that you're just not hearing. And you keep having issues with your mixes and you can't figure out why. Well, here's might be the biggest tip that you get all day. You can't correct what you can't hear. So before you run out and buy those new speaker monitors or the next pair of headphones, I've got some tips for you that are gonna help you see some of the problems in your mixes. I'm The Lonely Rocker. This is I Don't Have a Band and welcome to my home studio. All right, let's jump into this. So I just want to scratch the surface, sort of introduce you to the concept of visualizing your mix. You know, if you're stuck in that rut and you're just trying to get your mixes to the next level and you just can't seem to identify uh, issues that you're having with your mix, it's sort of recurring problems over and over again. You spend a whole day, you feel like, okay, I've, I finally figured out some issues and then you start to listen to it in a couple different places in your car and your earbuds and those problems just persist. They're there, they're continually there. Now one experience, that's that's a big hurdle to get over. It just takes time. Uh, but the big one of working in spaces that are just not really designed for mixing you know there's some some blind spots and things you're just you just can't hear certain frequencies so those are uh, the areas that I want to talk about today and that's where a visualizer will really help you now I'm gonna say right now your ears it's the most important tool that you have no visualizer no no analyzer is gonna mix your your tracks for you you got to learn and you got to learn to use your ears you got to let you've got to learn your space you know whether you're on monitors or headphones or a combination of the two uh, but what I'm hoping to do here today is to save you some money from running out and you know buying unnecessary plugins or new speaker monitors thinking that's the problem no you got to learn to use your ears you got to learn to use the gear that you have but if there are blind spots in your room and you're just not hearing them properly that's where some kind of visual aid will come in and help you and I, I certainly hope it's going to be an aha moment for you uh, it certainly was for me if it is uh, hopefully you'll uh, remember who told you okay so what I want to do just to, to sort of introduce the concept of visualizing your mix let's take a look at this uh, wooden grid box here so we're gonna have a little project we want to put an array of colored balls inside of our grid box here and uh, in, a, in a pleasing fashion and then we want to present it to a viewer so they can see what we've done so sort of the first uh, uh, layer of our project here we've gone in and we've put in some colored balls inside of this wooden box so these are the colors we intend the viewer to see and uh, it's pretty straightforward we can see everything well we're getting a little bored we want to make this look a little bit more interesting so we want to find room and stuff in some more colored balls so we go in there and we have a, a lot of room in here so we're doubling up in some of the boxes here uh, we can still see all of the colors that we've put in and the viewer can see all of the colors we intended them to see without much effort at all all right well we've got more we want to stuff in there and we're just trying to find room and now we've gone crazy and we've added all sorts of balls in our uh, our grid box here and now things are getting a little bit out of hand in some cases we've just got a blur of certain colors uh, we know here the blues are all over each other and there's a little green sort of poking its head out there but we know there could be a red one under there for all we know we just can't see that uh, there's just a lot going on here this is you running into problems with your mix you know in the bottom end of your mix is it's just muddy and you just can't hear the difference between the bass and the kick drum it's just everything is just one big pile of mud you know perhaps your mixes are really harsh you know you're just jacking up frequencies and volumes in that mid-range just in different instruments fighting uh, for for placement much like our colored balls here you know just creating just something that's just not pleasing uh, in this case to the eye but pleasing to the ear it's really harsh in the mid-range and certainly up top of your mixes same thing you know if your mixes are sounding really thin or brittle uh, just too bright and, and hard on the ears again you've got different frequencies fighting uh, fighting for survival in a sense I mean take a look at here there's just some balls that have just for all we know are under there and we can't see it and that's just really a waste of effort. Now, I wanna show you, you a representation of your room. We've just, uh, I've blanked out some, some grids here. Now, these are parts of our grid box that still exist. We can put marbles in there, we can take them out, but we can't see what's in there. So 
we're guessing. We come back tomorrow, we're not going to remember what was in there. We're like, okay, uh, what am I going to do here? So we start guessing. This is you turning dials and EQing over and over again and then running to your car and listening to your mix and saying, it still sounds terrible. Uh, this is what's happening. This is your room. There's certain parts of that mix you're guessing because you're just not able to hear it. Well, that's why I want to introduce uh, visual aids, the spectrum analyzers that will actually show you a snapshot visually of your mix and you can start to see uh, where all the problems are and that's where you can start identifying ways to correct those problems. And those two concepts that I want to share with you today, uh, two plugins, uh, two different visualizers, and this is not a sponsored review. These are tools that I actually use and both of them actually have a free option. So uh, uh, I'll put a link in the description so you can check those out uh, as I introduce them to you here in this video. But I'm going to make this really simple. There's two plugins and I'm going to show you one feature in each plugin. That's it. I mean, these plugins are just layered and stacked with all kinds of different meters and things like that. You don't need that right now. I'm just going to show you two features, one per plugin that I know is going to make a huge uh, difference for your mixes once you jump into that. And I'm certain uh, that's going to be the day that you go, uh -huh, I get it now. All right, so let's uh, jump into those. All right, let's take a look at uh, the first concept that I want to share with you today, and that's the idea of collision. Now, if we think of all of the tracks that we've got on our project, think about our grid. When we started stuffing things in, in the same boxes, we were different frequencies or different colors were colliding. Well, M Multi Analyzer from Melda Production uh, has got a ton of tools, but I want to pay close attention to one feature and the one feature that I really think that you need to try, and that's what they call collisions. So what this does, it analyzes uh, your, your mix and you can assign it to all of the tracks in your project. So, and then you can open any instance of the plugin uh, in this mode and you can see visually all of the other tracks. So let me just uh, play a second here. And we're not really not going to worry what it sounds like. You know, your ears are going to be your best tool no matter what. But for this exercise, I want to pay close attention to the, the visual side of mixing. So let me pause the graph here. All right, so if we take a look at the graph here, uh, the purple is our kick drum and the green area is our bass guitar. Now, these are two instruments that often fight for space in the lower end of the mix. And if you can look here, uh, wherever the color is denser, well, then those frequencies are a lot uh, a lot louder. So if we look at everything here, like, you know, 200 hertz and below, it's just between the two instruments, there's just a lot going on here. Now, that's a source of a lot of mud in your mixes. Uh, those two instruments are fighting for the same territory and neither one is really winning. So that's when you're going to start losing frequencies. You're going to have frequencies canceling each other out. You're going to lose energy down there. And there's going to be no definition between the kick drum and the bass guitar. So in this instance here, looking at it, I would say, well, I'd like to the kick drum to occupy the lower frequencies. I want it to give us that real low thump in our mix. And then I want to move the bass up a little bit, maybe clean out some of the frequencies here on the bottom end and just get those two tracks working together. So what I'm using here is just a stock EQ here in Logic. Whatever DAW you're working in, you can use uh, your favorite EQ. If you're using a third-party EQ, uh, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm just showing here that I'm not using anything anything special. So what I've done here, uh, taking a look at the kick, is that I wanted to occupy uh, that low end. And we already got a lot of energy coming from that kick drum, so I really don't have to add much more at all. Uh, but what I'm doing is at least a little uh, boost here at around, around 70, 75 hertz here, giving it a little bit of boost. And then look at this. There's a big cut here. Uh, that's at around 130 hertz, uh, because I know this is where I'd like the bass to sit. It's kind of a, a wide cue here so we'll say from like you know 100 up to about you know predominantly 130 140 150 i know that that's where i want the bass to sit uh in contrast the bass guitar look at this big cut i'm doing here we've got a high pass filter here rolling off everything below that 75 hertz point that's where we've got the little boost happening here on the kick drum again we're getting the bass out of the way and then uh, we're starting to boost some frequencies here around 100 150 and then at, at 1k i've got a bit of a boost here i like a real angry sort of mid-rangey guitar uh, bass guitar so uh, that'll give us a little bit of articulation and a little definition up top so i'm going to turn them on now and let's play our track again and really we're not worried how it sounds let's take a look at it on the meter here All right, I'll pause it here. Let's take a look at the meter again. So now, we, again, we rolled off the bottom end of the bass, and we can see here in the green area, what used to be a lot thicker, we've now started to clean out some of those frequencies in the bottom end. Uh, the purple is really heavy on the bottom. Again, that's our kick drum, so that's really occupying all this space. And then where did we do our little boost on our bass? You know, looking at around 120, 130, you know, starting after 100 and up to about 150, uh, we're seeing a little more energy here from the bass guitar, and we're starting to see that, that bass drum start to fade away. We can go in and be 
even more surgical, but that gives you a very clear visual example of how if you're not hearing those frequencies properly in your room, uh, perhaps you're working on smaller speakers, maybe you've got five inch speakers and you're not getting good bass response, you might not notice this. So uh, here we can very clearly see some issues we had and how we've cleaned it up. And again, as we get higher up the register, that uh, bass drum just sort of fades off into nothing. We've got a little more energy happening here in the bass guitar, that little boost that we did uh, in the mid range. Uh, this is just a snapshot, it is you know kind of moving, but we've got definitely a lot more energy here. So that's really a visual example of how you can start to create clarity between instruments by finding places to place them. And uh, you know, just looking further down uh, the line here, here are my guitars. Now I can see right now, we've got all this energy here at the bottom end. Uh, for guitars, as a rule, I always lop off everything below 90 hertz. I'll do a high pass filter and get it out of the way. And then as I start tweaking the mix, sometimes I even creep that a little bit higher, just depending on what's going on in my mix. But we can see already here, uh, there's some more mud coming in from our guitars. So just looking at this graph, I'll just do the same thing that I did with a bass guitar. I'll do a roll off, let's say here's about you know 90 to 100. I'll clean that up here. And then I might even do a little cut as well, maybe. But you know, I think around 150, I want to feel the sort of the meat or the energy of that guitar. So I'll find a place for it down there. And then I have to be sort of wary of that mid-range. Remember where we did a little uh, boost on the bass. Uh, we can see all of this energy in the mid-range. And we've got probably some collisions happening around here. So then you can start to notch one or the other to find space. But here's a great example. If you just can't hear those frequencies or you're in the process of training your ear to be able to hear those frequencies, this is a great way to really visually see some of the issues with your mix. And track by track, you can go in and find places for everything. And it's a really good way to start identify problems with your mix. So very quickly, before I get into the next uh, analyzer, I want to talk very, very, very quickly about mid-side EQing. If that's not a concept that you're familiar with, it might be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to touch on it very quickly, but it's definitely a topic for another video. But if we think in terms of the stereo spectrum, you know, in the first example here in my video, we talked about placement and figuring out where the collisions are happening and then adjusting our EQ uh, to, to carve out spaces for each of those instruments. Now, by doing those, those EQ adjustments and working in uh, a stereo mix, we're adjusting those frequencies across the the entire stereo spectrum. But what you can do, every DAW has the ability to do it, and certainly third-party plugins, is the ability to mix the middle of that mix and the sides of your mix. That's a really handy way to start getting more surgical with your EQ. Now, looking here in Logic, and if you're in a different DAW, whatever your, your standard EQ is, uh, look for mid-side processing. Um, in this case, we have uh, the options of EQing in stereo, we have left only, right only, mid and side. This is a very powerful way to EQ uh, much more surgically. So I want to specifically look at mid and side, and that's going to relate to the next uh, analyzer that I'm going to show you. But for example, here in uh, the channel EQ, is uh, let's say we want to do a little boost here at 1k. If I've set this to mid, it's only going to adjust the, the energy in the middle of that mix. So everything at 1k and within that, that Q curve, uh, the adjustment will be limited to the middle of that mix. Now I could switch this processing to side only, and that same adjustment now won't touch the middle, but it'll affect things on the side. Now, where does that help? Let's think about our kick drum now. Now, typically we're going to pan our kick drum in, in the middle. Now there are going to be exceptions, but let's say we have it panned uh, dead center. We've carved out the frequencies, cleared it out of the way of the bass guitar. But remember, there was a little dust left behind. That energy is going to build up, especially as we add other instruments. So we can say, you know what, we want to focus that bass drum to the center of the mix. Well, we can use a mid-side EQ like this. Uh, we can say side only, and that's just going to roll off that low energy uh, in the sides of the mix. So let's say we've got our guitars there. Remember, we rolled off the bottom end. We pan them left and right. We just tighten that bass drum up in the middle, and we can use mid-side processing uh, to, um, to, to correct that. Now, the thing about... Uh, uh, the channel EQ is that the, the plugin has to be set to either mid or side. You can't have different uh, adjustments within the same uh, frequency curve. Whereas something like a Fab Filters Pro Q3, much more expensive uh, third party plugin, uh, I can do, let's say, a boost on the sides here. I can set that to the sides here by just using the, the tear off menu here. And then let's say I just pick another frequency and I can set that um, stereo placement to mid. So I can actually have side and mid adjustment within the same EQ curve. It's not a big deal. All you need to do here is make your side adjustments with one instance of the plugin. Just load a second one and set that one to mids and you can make your adjustments. So if you're using stock plugins, at least here in Logic, um, other DAWs, I'm sure it's pretty similar. Uh, that's just what you'd have to do. So that's just a little introduction to mid side uh, that'll help you. If anyone's interested in me diving deeper into those concepts, just let me know and I will do a dedicated video on that. So now I want to introduce you to Voxango Span Plus. This is a really, really great meter. Again, a lot of features built into this, 
but I want to show you one feature that I think is really, really going to help you. So having a basic understanding of mid-side EQing, well, there's a feature here in the Voxango Span uh, Plus plugin that allows you to overlay uh, different graphs into one so you can make comparisons, much like uh, the M Multi Analyzer we, we, where we had different layers, we had different instances of that plugin on different tracks. You can do the same thing here and see all the curves for different instruments in one graph. But what I've actually done here, I've set it to mid side. So if we look at this green area, we're actually looking at the frequency curve for everything happening in the middle of our mix, more to the, towards the center. And if we look at the yellow areas, we're actually looking at information from the sides of the mix. Now the rule of thumb here when you're looking at mid side EQing and you're judging it here on a meter, the trick is to get that yellow area to live inside of the green area. When you start to see red, that means um, those side frequencies are poking above the mid frequencies. And that's typically where you're going to find some issues in your mix. And if you're using an EQ with mid side processing, well, you can start looking and said, well, we've definitely got problems here. And this is uh, from one of my first mixes where I just tried to make my first real professional mix. And looking at it now, I can see where I had tons of issues. I certainly wasn't using this meter back in the day. So uh, looking at it now, I say, wow, okay, I can really see where I was having some problems. So if I was EQing this, I can go in and figure out what tracks were, were causing this and either bring down those frequencies in the stereo spectrum or get more surgical and start bringing them down in the sides. And again, think in terms logically, uh, still going to use your ears uh, placement like a kick drum. If it's dead center and you've got a lot of low end energy in the middle, you know what? You can roll off that low end energy on the sides of the kick drum that will clean up some space for some other tracks. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of different uh, tracks here. I've downloaded some popular songs. Unfortunately, I can't play them because uh, you YouTube may block this video, but what I want to do is we're really just looking at the visual graphs anyways, and I want to give you an example of some different uh, tracks and uh, different eras just to give you an idea what a really good mix actually looks like. Let's take a look at that. This is Rope by the Foo Fighters. This is an example of a really dense loud mix. Lots of heavy guitars, bass, drums, and Dave Grohl's signature vocals. The Foo Fighters are known for recording with a lot of vintage gear and especially that beautiful Neve console really great productions. For the most part, you can see those side frequencies in yellow contained inside the mid frequencies with only minor spikes of red. This track is also mastered quite loud, very dense looking curve and is definitely reflective in the track. By contrast, this is Red Barchetta by Rush. This was produced in the early 80s, long before the Loudness Wars. Moving Pictures is one of the most beautifully produced rock albums in my opinion. Very clear, every instrument is clearly audible, lots of air in the mix and is very easy on the ears. Analyzing this track, we can see a lot of separation between the side and mid frequencies, and in my opinion, this is one of the reasons why this mix sounds so clear. Moving over to a pop mix, this is Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. To my ear, this is a much simpler production. Not a ton of instrumentation, but a very clear mix and very soothing to the ears. Again, in this example, you can see very clear separation between the side and mid frequencies, and the mix definitely reflects that. Now let's take a look at a hip hop track. This is Travis Scott's Franchise. Again, not a very dense track in terms of instrumentation, but a solid beat and lots of vocals. Very clear separation of side and mid frequencies and a very smooth and clear sounding mix overall. Lastly, I decided to randomly search for one of the hottest tracks on YouTube and found Medusa's Paradise. Now, I know nothing about this artist, but if I was to guess, especially after analyzing this track, the production doesn't sound so top-notch to me, and looking at the graph, we can see some problems with sustained issues in the mids. And comparing this track to some of my previous examples, it doesn't sound nearly as clear and refined. These are just a few examples, but this is a great way to compare your own mixes to some tracks you really like. Using references audibly is a great thing to do to set goals, and it works just as well visually utilizing a spectrum analyzer like this. The Voxango Span Plus is a mainstay on my master bus. I have it there for every single session right from the beginning. It's certainly a great way to monitor the progress of your mix. I mean, if you're starting right from the beginning, uh, I have it there all the time. It's definitely a go-to. Uh, by the way, Voxango Span Plus, there is a free version of the plugin as well. It's just called Span. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to that one as well. But actually, you can also use Span Plus. There's a little uh, limitation where the audio cuts out every few seconds, but the, the meter still works. So it's a good way to evaluate the plugin, but I highly recommend uh, giving it a try because it really, really helped me. And if you look at the two of these plugins 
together, being able to see where all these collisions are happening. And like I said, if you're not hearing them properly, you can definitely use a multi analyzer to really detect where all of those problem areas are. Start carving out spaces for all of your tracks. And at the same time, monitoring your mid side. I mean, this, if you think about starting a, a new project and you've got these meters on right from the beginning, you can start to see these problems happening in real time. You know, you're not getting to the end of a mix. You spend a week on a mix and you're trying to figure out what the problems are. If you have these meters going all the time, keep them on your master bus. You have different instances of M multi analyzer across your whole project and you can just watch your project build, keeping an eye on the frequencies where things are ganging up and keeping an eye on the mid side EQing here and seeing any issues that are happening as you go. I'm telling you, it's going to make a world of difference for your mixes. It absolutely did for me. And uh, I definitely highly recommend you give it a try. Like I said, links to both plugins, free and paid versions are in the description. So uh, definitely check them out. Well, if you're new to the channel, I hope I've earned a subscribe. I've got a ton of content on this channel, a lot of it revolving around this home studio geared to the home studio enthusiast with videos to hopefully help make your home studio life better. So perhaps you can just click that subscribe button and come along for the ride. If you really want to support this channel, I am on Patreon. Links to everything I've discussed and some things I haven't are in the description below. And above all else, I hope I'll see you again in another video. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And please like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date. Remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. There are a lot of great musical projects you can do by yourself, right from your own home. I hope to see you again next time.